So we'll call the meeting to order. The Environmental Health Registration Board meeting is convening at 9 a.m. on 927. The meeting is being held in person and by MS, MS Teams video conference and is being recorded. The recording will be posted to the internet for public viewing. The Health Licensing Office asks that individuals attending through MS Teams keep your phone muted and your cameras off during the entire meeting until you're given an opportunity to comment during the public and interested parties feedback period if indicated on the agenda. Please do not use the chat feature during the meeting. I will now call roll. <clears throat> Rhonda Rob. Hi, Rob here. Bonnie Simpson seems to be absent. Sean Rochette. Present. Eric Lamb. Present. 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 Jesse Leno. Present. Members, when you wish to speak, please state your last name for the record. Board members are asked not to use the chat feature during meetings. Public members wishing to speak must first sign in on the roster sheet available. For public members on MS Teams, please email Josh Page at josh.page, P-A-G-E, at oha.oregon.gov and provide your first and last name. Public and interested parties feedback may be heard during the public and interested parties feedback period if indicated on the agenda. Everyone is asked to use appropriate language, manners, and protocols when conducting board business. The meeting is called to order. All right. So it looks like the first item on the agenda today is to um, approve the agenda. I can make a motion to approve the agenda, please. Rochette, well, I second. Actually need a motion first. And then I'll accept uh, Sean's second. Rob, motion to approve. Thank you. So we have a motion to approve and a second. And then uh, I need to call roll again. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. I'm sorry, it's been a busy week. Could you uh, help prompt me a little bit here? So yeah, no just, problem. Uh, no problem. <laughs> making sure. We... <laughs> um, <clears throat> Rhonda, Rob. Rob, present. Um, actually, we're calling for. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm not being clear. We're actually calling for an approval of the of the meeting agenda. Oh, approve. Barney is not present. Sean. Rochette. Approve. Eric Lamb. Approve. Jesse Leno. Leno, approve. Right. All Sounds right. like we're approved and we can move forward. Great. So the next item on the agenda are the meeting dates for 2025. If you can believe that, we're already at that point. So we're going to be um, the the office is uh, has you know looked at the schedule and and all of those things and we have um, put out there that the dates for the two meetings in 2025 would be on March 24th at 9 a.m. and then again at in sept on September 19th uh, at 9 a.m. So there's two Why? on the. I'm Go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry, my packet says March 14th, not March 24. Did I say 24? I meant 14. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Maybe I need a little bit more coffee this morning. All good. <laughs> so yeah, March March 14th. I, I apologize. March 14th at 9 a.m. and then also on September 19th uh, at 9 a.m. So uh, if you know if people have any availability issues that they know of at this far in advance. I know that's a long way out. Um, 
uh, you know, they can they can bring that up now, or if anybody has any objections or discussions about it, they can go ahead and talk about it. If not, um, we can take a motion to approve those um, those two dates. Lanou, I move that the dates be approved. Rochette, second. Have a motion and a second to approve the dates for the 2025 meetings. I have to go through roll again. Is that correct? Yeah. Do you want another okay. vote? You go down the roll and, and take a vote. Okay. Uh, Scott Kruger, I. Rhonda Robb. Robb, yes. John Rochette. Aye. Eric Lamb. Aye. And Jesse Leno. Leno, aye. Leno. Thank you so much. Sounds like it's meeting meeting dates are approved. So the next item on the agenda is again some more business for next year which is going to be to um, appoint a chair and a vice chair. Uh, it appears that I'm kind of looking ahead at the director's report, which gives every which gives us uh, what everybody's term is and um, when their terms end. And I think the only person that's going, everybody's going to be going through 2025, except for Rhonda Robb, who will be, her second term will be ending on November 5th, 2025, so right at the end of the year, after the last meeting. So I don't know that that would make a, a huge difference, but uh, that's the only person that is going to be um, expiring at that at that during that year and won't be able to renew because it'll be reappoint because it'll be her second second term. So um, everybody is up in the is <clears throat> could potentially. Uh, you know, take on that role next year, um, or uh, they can. We could just leave it as it is. Uh, now it's um, it's up for discussion and motions. If anybody wants to make any, have any discussions or make any motions, I guess we would have to know whether um, uh, Scott and Monty, who's not here, would be willing to serve again as the chair. Um, but um, other than that, we can. People can discuss or make a motion or competing well, it's, motions. It's certainly hasn't been a taxing job to read script, so um, I'm certainly willing to participate and continue to participate unless somebody else has the burning desire. No. <clears throat> I don't hear any burning desire. <laughs> this is Roshat. I, I support you, Scott. Okay. Well, somebody, I guess somebody will need to make a motion if we're going and Bonnie's not here to represent herself. So how do we how do we move that forward? Well, I mean, you you can appoint somebody uh, as the I mean, we could also include her as the vice chair again for 2025 without her. OK, her, you know, her being here, uh, if she was to say, I don't want to do it anymore, then, then that, that we could we could have a discussion about that. But OK. But it, she could she could be appointed and, and approved without her here. OK. Well, uh, this is would somebody Rochette. like to uh, make a motion? Yep, I will. Uh, Rochette, I make a motion to um, for 2025 have Scott Kruger as here and Bonnie Lamb as vice chair of the Environmental Health Registration Board. All right. We have a second. Bon I have it as Bonnie Simpson. I'm sorry, this is Trampus. I have it as Bonnie Simpson. Sorry about that. That's OK. <laughs> Bonnie Simpson. <laughs> Thank you. This is Rob. I approve. Second. All right, now you can call roll. Huh? All right, so I'll be calling roll for maintaining our chair and vice chair positions. Uh, Rhonda Robb. Aye. Sean Rochette. Aye. Eric Lamb. Aye. Jesse Lanou. 
Lanu, aye. Thank you. And you can vote as well, Scott. Oh, well, Scott Kruger, aye. There Thank you go. You. <laughs> All right. So um, I guess we were we are on to some reports. So um, the next item on the agenda is the director's report. I'm I'm Travis I'm the actual interim regulatory manager. So I'm not uh, Bob Bothwell, who is the director, but he is has not been able to be with us today. Um, so uh, he asked me to, to to set in and and make sure that this information gets to uh, everybody. Um, so. We have the first report here. I just kind of talked about the recruiting process and the and the um, you know the board member background, uh, who has to be on the board, the kind of the makeup of the board. Uh, these are kind of standard things. One of the things that I think I do want to bring to your attention on this director's report is on page 12. It, it, it just one page 12 in the meeting uh, materials is the board member training where there's some required training, uh, annual training that has to happen for all the board members. And uh, you may have already been notified of this, but we always like to take the opportunity to bring it out there, um, to put it out there and, and send out a reminder. So there's some um, there's an overview of the boards and commission training that's required once per term. There's information security training that's required annually. Um, there's also a, a preventing discrimination and harassment training that is required annually. And then there's an overview of Oregon ethics law, which is optional. You don't have to take that one, but if you have any questions or you know about it whatsoever. Krampus, this is a Rochette. So, um, does that all show yeah, up in work day? It is all in work day, yes. Yeah. So all of okay. these are work day training modules. Um, so, you know, I assume everybody has um, has had to deal with work day and work day training, some of it in the past. So um, I yeah. will so say it does get a little it does get a little tedious with the dual authentication because I'm I'm also with the Oregon Health Authority and have access to Orpheus. And so between you guys and my normal job and and the Oregon Health Authority kind of navigating the, you know, the authenticator and um, queuing in the right area for it to authenticate has been a little challenging at times, oh, but uh, <laughs> you know, we're getting there. So, Yeah, it makes me do an authenticator every single time, pretty much I do anything. So. Yeah. 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 Security true. is uh, pretty high with all this stuff. So, but um, yeah. So just to put a, a reminder out there that to, to go in there and 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 see if you've got any training, if any of these trainings are 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 still needed by the end of the year. I know I have annual trainings I have to do by the end of the year as well. So, um, so the next thing up is uh, just talking about the um, the the. Um, well, and there's a little note about political activity and, you know, coming into the uh, 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 an election year, uh, there's uh, some some things that you want to think about um, as a board member and, and how you represent yourself as a board member versus a uh, just a human, you know, citizen. So um, the current board makeup, we've got, like I was saying before in the previous uh, d discussion that we have, uh, everybody is basically uh, in their uh, going to be serving over the next year, um, or at least is eligible to continue serving through the next year. We've got a couple of people in their second term. Um, Scott is in his second term, but he's good until June of 2026. And um, Bonnie is in her second term. But she's good until 2027, which seems like a lifetime away, but it will come up on us quickly, I'm sure. And then Rhonda Robb, is, uh, this is her last um, year of her second term won't be able to reappoint. Um, I assume all of these are serve until replaced, but um, that one I would have to find details on if that when that if and when that situation comes up. So um, yeah. So otherwise, we've got Sean, uh, Sean and uh, Jesse in their first uh, and Eric in in their first terms, um, and they'd be able to reappoint after that. We have one open position, which is a vacant food and alcohol rep. Um, so if anybody um, 
will be looking for recruiting that position. So you have a full board. Right now you have six of seven. So Derek has done a real good job of keeping all of our boards full, um, although he's going to be uh, moving on to a different role in the agency. So um, we'll be getting a new uh, Derek, basically. We do have a new person that is running our meetings. You probably have already had Josh Page reach out to you. So um, Josh Page is kind of into the new contacts for the office as well um, for for board. He's the He's the board specialist responsible for basically setting up and coordinating and all of that stuff for these meetings. So um, uh, he'll be he'll be sending out notices and questions about whether or not you're going to attend and if you have any questions about board meetings or anything like that. Um, he's always a resource for you to uh, get a hold of. So yeah, so I think that's pretty much it for the director's report, and we'll move on to licensing and statistics. So as we talk about these, uh, if you're following along on the board materials, it's starting on page 16 is the first uh, slide, and this is licenses issued. So you can see that these are cut up into fiscal years, quarters of fiscal years, and fiscal years are a little different than um, um, just calendar years. They go from Excuse uh, me, Trampas, are you sharing? Mm -hmm. Are you sharing your screen? I'm not sharing my screen. Um, I, can I, bring I could. The from, that would be helpful, please. All right, let me see if I can get that. That's great. Thank you so much. Is that it? Everybody can see it that now? Yeah. Okay. So this is um, slide 16. This is licenses issued. Like I was saying, fiscal years are a little bit different than calendar years here at the state. They start on uh, July 1st and they go through um, June 30th. So uh, that's what you're seeing. And then you have, they're cut up in bienniums. So they go for two years instead of one. So that's why you see, um, well, excuse me, these are fiscal years, so that, that they're just one year at a time. I'm sorry. We have the bienniums, but that's in a different section of the report. So as you can see, we have quarter one, two, three, four of each of those. We are uh, finished with quarter one of the 2025 fiscal year. So it kind of is, is strange because the, the last, you know, we're, it's only 2024, but we've just kind of getting close to wrapping up that um, that first quarter of the or we're two thirds of the way through. So you can see these are the licenses issued for environmental health specialists and then environmental health specialist trainees. So that just gives you a sense of where we are and how many people are coming into the profession. And then um, environmental health specialist renewals, this just gives us a sense of how many people are renewing, um, also cut up into fiscal years. Um, you can also see here another important piece of this um, information that's on this slide is that you can compare online versus paper. Of course, we always want people to go online because it reduces uh, paper and mailing and opening and and scanning and all of those things. So, um, and you have a pretty good pretty good uh, ratio here. Most uh, the vast majority of people are renewing uh, online. Still, you got a few with paper, which is is fine. So. Um, Wastewater specialist renewals. This shows the thing, same statistics for wastewater folks. Um, there's not as many, so um, you know, not the numbers aren't quite as high. Oh, just the same information for them. And then licenses by age and gender. So this statistic, this gives us a little bit of an idea of what our, um, uh, you know, kind of is this, uh, you know, if if it was all on the the high end and we had no new people coming in the profession, we might be, hey, what's going on? And this gives us kind of a, but you kind of got a nice peak in the middle. Um, so, um, and you can see that it's, it's at least in some of them, it's, it gives you an idea of it's male, female, or other um, people who identify as male, people who identify as female, or, or people who identify as other. Here you can see that. Kind of the, the big bulk is the, kind of the 34 to the 
to 65. That seems to be the bigger, biggest group, but I think that looks like a healthy distribution. And then wastewater specialists, that's a pretty even distribution. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I checked this graph like six times because I was pretty sure this could not be right, but it is. Wow. Well, <laughs> so there you go. Nice distribution there. That's that's what we like to see. Just so long we got some people coming up from the other direction. Uh, uh, but uh, so licensing trends. This gives us a picture of the licenses over the last couple of years and the numbers um, uh, of those licenses. So you can see environmental health specialists here at the top, and then trainees, and then also wastewater specialists. Now. One thing to keep in mind, these are a quarterly average. So sometimes you'll see a half a person or a 0.7 of a person. That's just due to how it's been, how the numbers kind of come out. So they're, they're just averages uh, of, of the overall three month period of how many licenses there were. So that's what you're looking at here. And you can see um, it's pretty consistent. You see a little bit of a, of a bump up, which is, which is um, for, Farm by and health specialist. So, um, but for the most part, it's pretty, it's pretty even. Yeah. So, Environmental Health Registration Board. This is your um, your fiscals. This is this is how you're doing fiscally. These are fiscal years, um, and you can see that you are doing pretty well. Your your revenues and your expenditures are pretty balanced for the most part. You have a little bit here where you've had a couple of years ago where they were lower, but um, the, these, the variance um, in this is, you know, we have a formula for determining how much of the pie that, you know, the Environmental Health Registration Board has to pay for out of the HLO you know, the whole HLO, you know, whether it's regulatory, whether it's licensing, small board, whether it's the lights and the rent and all that stuff for the building and that kind of thing. Um, so that's pretty, that's pretty, uh, pretty even for the most part. It doesn't change a whole lot where it happens. If you have a case that has, you know, a, a contested case that ends up going to a hearing, if we have a lot of legal advice, we have a lot of extra attention or something like that that's going on or a special issue that's happening you'll see those expenditures go up and if you have a if you have a large like a regulatory case it can be pretty expensive so you have a nice cushion um, uh, but uh, you seem pretty healthy so fiscally wise at least and then the next and did anybody have any questions about any of these reports I'm sorry I didn't ask if anybody has any questions that the the two hundred and fifty three thousand dollar plus balance there um that will continue to support um reductions in online renewals yeah i'm not sure yeah i i'm i'm not 100 percent sure what you've got with that online renewals right now but if you have a reduction that would can you would it would it doesn't appear that you're it's it's hurting you uh it doesn't appear that it's lowering your balance so if if that's um, if if, uh, but I'm not sure that that you would want to dip into it too much more. Um, so, but I guess yeah. I'm just kind of getting a sense because I like paying what fifty dollars less by renewing online. So, if we can continue to do that, I would be happy. Yeah, and <clears throat> I don't know if there's any kind of a, a sunset on that, or if there's an automatic sunset on that. But um, I can certainly bring that up to. Um, to send that up the ladder and 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 let them know that um, that was brought up, but I don't think there's any sense. Sometimes there is a, there is like a it's good until here, and then it automatically goes, and the board has to renew it. So um, I will look into that and find out if that's if that's the case. So yeah, that's how you, that's how you get people to renew online is is having a discount, convenience and and pocketbook, right? All right, so regulatory report. You are, uh, this board doesn't have a whole lot going on right now in the regulatory department. Um, 
over the last, there's a couple of biennium on here, but there's no open cases. So um, you see, you're seeing the 2021 biennium, 2023 biennium, and then the current biennium that we're in for 2025. And we don't have any cases that are open, and we don't have, um, we actually haven't gotten any cases come in since um, this biennium started, which we're a year into it. So um, that's actually pretty, um, pretty noteworthy that we just haven't had any complaints um, on this board recently, which is a good thing. So um, means that we're not having any problems. A lot of the problems that we do, a lot of the, as you can see in the complaints by type section, um, a lot of the complaints that do come in, or at least a, a fair amount of them, have been licensing concerns um, over the last, what, five years, I think this, this report is showing. So um, yeah, half of them have been licensing concerns. And others have been, you know, kind of services provided and, and safety sanitation. So kind of hard to figure out exactly what, they, what those were um, without digging into them. But... And you can see that complaints by complainants by type, the people who actually filed the complaints, um, five of them were were clients. So I'm not sure who your client would be in this on this board, but um, and then there's others, uh, and then um, you know, so other would just be in some other third party. I guess it could be somebody self maybe self reporting or a, or or something like that. So not a client. But that is it for the regulatory. But does anybody have any questions about regulatory or this report or anything that has to do with um, investigations or or regulatory? All right. So I guess that's it for the reports. That's all the agency has. Um, um, pretty light meeting up to this point. So um, we have um, interested, public interested parties um, feedback. I don't think we have any public on the uh, Teams meeting right now. Do we have any public on the Teams meeting at all? If you- No, there's, there's nobody. Yeah, I don't think so, yeah, so. Um, I think that you I, should I just probably just one. read Go ahead. Go ahead, Scott. I, I, thank you. I just had one comment before we adjourn for the day. Um, <clears throat> we are meeting um, in the middle of October for the Oregon Environmental Health Association. <clears throat> and my concern is that, you know, over the course of the last year, because I'm appointed a chair, people think that I have some type of... <clears throat> clout, I guess is the word that I'm looking for, or something that says, oh, well, you're the chair. And and I try, I try to remind people, no, you know, I, I, I follow a script, I read the script. But beyond that, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't make decisions on behalf of the board. I don't speak about the board, you know, reminding people that, you know, you can join the meeting when you want, but we're basically sequestered from talking about it unless, you know, we're approved to do so. Um, and I'm wondering, <clears throat> I'm kind of wondering at the meeting, uh, because most of the environmental health specialists around the state would be there if there's <clears throat> anything on my part I could kind of do to remind people about the board's function and what we do. I, I think that people reach out to me because they think that I can take care of their trainee processing or their, you know, their issues um, with with licensing or, or and, and, and a lot of that is around trainees for sure, because it's a little bit complicated to navigate sometimes. But um, mm -hmm. got any suggestions? You know, um, I know my place for sure. And um, it just it, it, it is awkward when people call and expect that I I have some type of authority to do some type of action. And I'm like, no, I, I really don't. So does, um, does that make sense? I, I think I think that what I think that what you're saying um, is is good. Um, if you would like, um, we can we can reach out. You can reach out to um, um, Bob or myself or or Anne 
and um, we can we can kind of talk about that um, as mm -hmm. far as like, and we can give you some maybe specific kind of um, uh, pass on advice that we've been given, kind of thing. So that um, that would be helpful. I think I think in, as an afterthought, maybe for the future when we have our our annual AEC, um, it might be good for to. Uh, consider to have the board uh one of you guys from uh from the licensing office show up and just you know talk about the board dynamics um <clears throat> i don't think it has to be an annual thing but it's been a while um i usually don't miss and it's been a while since um anybody from the licensing office was there um just kind of talking about their function and all the dynamics so um is, is that an <clears throat> i actually yeah, I, I actually um, <clears throat> one of their uh, one of their board members is on my on my team, so um, I might just bring that forward for them to reach out to you all and invite you to a you know session yeah. sometime. So, yeah, if, I I know that um, other organizations and have their annual meetings uh, and and things like that, and uh, sometimes they will reach out to us and ask us to um, to attend and you know either speak or you know give a presentation or something and i know that we've done that in the past with other you know organizations so um yeah if if they or, or you reach out to and i'll i'll send this up the a ladder as well um but um if if they specifically or you were specifically I'm not sure that you're representing them but um I'm not okay um we would we would if we were able to, we would um, we would we would have somebody attend. So that'd be cool. All right, it's possible. Yeah, right. Depending on where it is and what it is, sure. and what they want, yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, but they're wanting for sure. us to give them. So yeah, yeah, we we do do try to do outreach um, with these organizations and and take their information. They can always make um, you know suggestions if they're saying hey. Uh, Scott, we would really like to see this happen uh, in the world of uh, environmental health licensing, uh, and and you know they could you could also direct them to um, send a um, you know send that information in or come and speak at a meeting, and and bring that topic up. Um, right. You can bring topic up, you know. So, but you know, I think that there's a little more there's some nuance to that that um, we'd be happy to talk to you about. So. Those types of situations come up as well. So, um, yeah. Great. Thank you. Uh, I, the agency doesn't have any. Oh, that wasn't. I'm sorry. I had the wrong slide up. That was other board business. Um, the agency doesn't have any other board business at this time. Um, and like I said, unless unless the the chair has or or the the uh, the board has any anything that they would like to. Uh, Discuss besides what we just discussed, um, or issues that maybe they want on the agenda for the next board meeting, topics that they would want to talk about in March, um, so we could get those on the agenda, so people will know that we're going to talk about them and um, and such. So, I think that uh, it's always helpful to include um, <clears throat> processing trainee criteria. I think that that's mostly questions that I get and most of the frustration of trying to get people through the process, aligning their educational background with, you know, science based courses and um, <clears throat> often hits some roadblocks along the way. And so I, <clears throat> I know we've had a little bit of that on our agenda in the past, but I, I do feel like that's an important thing to continue to review because that's most of the frustration questions I get is just trying to onboard trainees and get them through the system and you know get them get right. them moving so right yeah and that's a that's a pro, that's a of course an issue that we are 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 pretty versed in that that's a that that can be difficult uh it's one of the more difficult points about uh, getting people through this uh licensing process so um so i know that that that's something that has been an ongoing um problem to be solved so or not problem to be solved but a issue to be looked at so sure yeah. Okay. We'll see well, that. Should we uh, adjourn? Yeah. If if there's no other board business, and um, we can, you can read the script uh, 
adjourn the meeting. Perfect. The Environmental Health Registration Board meeting is adjourned at 9.35 a.m.